Hi, this is Jeffrey Smith. Welcome to part three of this beach pole blight. The state has asked Dewey for beach land after already issuing 20 permits without notifying Dewey. The town gets legal advice that actually Dewey owns the beach lands, not the state and has a contract to prove it. The telecom lobbyists have shown up. So the question is, will Dewey cave to big telecom and two state politicians? Let's see. Stay tuned. We got a telephone call, meaning we, meaning myself and uh, Mr. Zolper, the town attorney was involved later. It had to deal with uh, a proposal that was submitted by Dell Dot that they felt would help us in clarifying what our authority would be with wireless communication on the right of way. In particular, I think our issue had dealt with uh, the beach lands. Mr. Townsend, have you had a chance to review this? I have. I, I will say, though, that this is a pretty big departure from where we were. Uh, this was pretty surprising to me that they come back with, with this proposal, and I'm a little bit hesitant to say that I'm comfortable with it. I want to make sure there aren't any consequences that are unforeseen. There's quite a bit of language in here, of course, relating to wireless service providers that was not part of the old agreement, and they are maintaining in this agreement the desire to define a uh, right of way as to as to include the uh, eight eight feet beyond the outermost edge of the pillows. By signing that, we would be agreeing that the right of way extends eight feet beyond the the end of these streets that stub at the ocean. That language was not apparent, or, or that uh, definition of the right of way or definition of the begin, beginning of Beachlands was not evident in our prior agreement. This would have the effect of establishing that as a definition so that the right of way would extend eight feet beyond the end of the road. That's a substantive change. There was that eight, eight foot section between what we thought was the beginning of the beach land and the end of the road surface. That's probably where some poles are already uh, er erected at this point. Does, does any of this change our ability to regulate the placement of poles in that area? I think a better way a better way of looking at this is that these these poles can be sited in the right of way and not outside the right of way. It would be a non starter if a, an industry provider wished to locate a pole outside of a public right of way. not for the right of ways, then we might not be here. I was really thinking more about the ability of uh, a wireless provider to put a uh, utility pole upon beach lands. And, and I think beach, the definition of beach lands is relevant to that supplemental agreement. Mm -hmm. Let's use Google Earth to illustrate. First, here is Bellevue Street, but this could apply to any street in town. Here's a to scale 50 foot wide right of way easement. The end of pavement is the key point here. Let's take a drawing of the actual street 
as it's laid out. Drawing is to scale and it's from a pole permit showing the right of way. The Dewey Beach lands begin at the end of the pavement according to the 1983 agreement. Why this matters is because a permit was issued for Bellevue. The pole would be beyond the right of way. But will the council sign away its beach lands to Del Dot? 